All right, I finally get it. Claude Code is admittedly kind of awesome. In a session last week, I was able to vibe out this humble brag site that lists all the content I have created for Convex over the past year. It was able to do this from complete scratch, including YouTube API fetching and parsing, AI-based parsing of video article descriptions and automated project extraction, X API fetching, and even an auth backend uh, for me to administer everything. I was able to do all of this without me ever having to open an IDE, not even once. It was impressive to watch and use, but there are definitely some issues that I encountered. And doing everything through the terminal is just, uh, well, I guess we'll get to that in a minute. First, make sure you drop me a like and sub and grab yourself a lovely cup of tea and we will dive into it all. So this whole thing came about because over the Christmas break, I had a bit of an existential crisis uh, that I wrote down in this X post. And it got a bit of attention, for, for me at least. Honest question time. So I have been working as a developer experience engineer at Convex for just over the, a year at this point. I've made heaps of videos and educational content from the perspective that I know of, an experienced software developer. Now, it seems clear to me that close to 100% of code from in the future is going to be written by AI. So what does that mean for me and my role? I joined Convex because I fell in love with the platform, the code, the API, and just wanted to tell others about it. But now it seems that that stuff is becoming less and less important for humans to know. So what does this mean for me in my role? Basically, I think something happened over the Christmas break as I started to see more and more examples of people saying they are flipping to an agent first way of developing. People were saying that something changed when Opus 4.5 was released when you combine it with Claude Code. Now, I don't want to dwell too much on the question of what it means to be a coder, or what it means to be a developer experience engineer in the age of agentic first coding in this video. I'll, maybe I'll save that for another video. Instead, what I want to do is focus on the fact that I personally had a large gap in my experience of what appears to be the new way to develop applications. I personally hadn't actually tried Claude Code yet, <laughs> embarrassingly. Instead, I usually prefer to use an IDE-based interface like Cursor or VS Code. I had shied away primarily because I just personally am not a fan of terminal-based UIs. I find them kind of clunky and harder to learn and use than UI-based tools. But if this was to be the future development, then I knew I was going to have to bite the bullet and give it a crack myself. So I fired up a terminal, installed Claude Code, and gave it a crack. Now, I won't iterate the stuff that I've already talked about in the intro, and instead, I'm going to dive into a list of things that I don't like and do like about Claude Code. All right, so first, let's get some of the good stuff out of the way so I can flip into my more natural pessimistic Brit mode. Now, I do just want to mention here that I wanted to get the true Claude Code experience here. So I used it from the terminal. I am aware that Anthropic have just released a UI-based version that's baked into the desktop client, and I'm keen to try that out soon. Um, but just note that my opinions here pertain to the terminal-based version of Claude Code. So firstly, plugins. I love plugins and how easy they are to install in Claude Code. Simply type slash plugin, and then the name of the plugin that you want to install from, and it will install from its own internal marketplace. And to add something to that marketplace, you can similarly add that uh, through slash commands. Plugins can uh, include extra slash commands, agent hooks, MTP servers, and all the good stuff. So when I started, I added this dev browser plugin, uh, which looked super useful to me as I could just say, please take a look at this screen, and it would be able to load it up, take a screenshot, or look at the console output and, and see what the error was. They also added the Convex MCP, um, which I found was useful actually for the LLM to inspect the database. Um, though to be honest, it was probably just as easy for the LLM to use the CLI or write a one-off internal mutational query and then use the CLI to execute it. I also added a couple of the built-in plugins that, that come with Claude Code. Um, so one that is a, a Claude skills for front-end design um, that is supposed to make the UI look less sloppy. I mean, I'll leave you up to decide whether that is, the, that is true or not. 
Um, and then I also added the Context 7 MCP, which is supposed to help with API documentations. Now, a minor thing that I like about Claude Co compared to Cursor, for example, is how it shows the live token count incrementing like this here. I just think that's a nice little touch. One major thing I like about Claude Code is the plan mode. It was really useful, particularly at the start of the project, for me to feed out the solution space a little bit. It would ask me a few questions about what I wanted to do and if there was any amb ambiguity about what I was asking for. I really like this collaborative discussion type approach to problem solving, particularly near the start. And I would love to see more of this from AI tooling in 2026. Now, Cursor does have a plan mode, and I do use it quite frequently. But the big difference I found between the Cursor's plan mode and the Claude Code plan mode is that Claude Code is able to choose to go into plan mode itself when it gets a sense that the task is going to be a bit complex and it probably should be planned out a little bit first. And as far as I'm aware, that this is not possible currently in Cursor, but I think it would be awesome if it were. Now, while we're on the topic of praising the Agenti experience, I would have to say that in general, yeah, it did a fantastic job of coming up with a solution to solve my problem. It's kind of hard to say whether this is the intelligence of the model itself or it's the, the excellence in the system prompting from the Claude Code engineers, but the way that it was able to call tools to solve the problem, I found was top notch. It used the right tools at the right time and everything was just generally smooth and left me with a great deal of confidence that I didn't need to handhold it through the problem. It, it would just figure it out itself. Was it any better than Cursor? Hard to say. I've generally been very impressed with the way that Cursor handles all of this too. So it, and it's obviously going to vary from model model and version to version. I personally would love to see some sort of like agentic tooling benchmark to help disambiguate what was good here. Was it the model's abilities or is it the tooling, the glue between the tool calling and everything else that was the the thing that was successful here. Because I was using Claude Code from a CLI, it loads just about instantly. And this is awesome because you can just pop into your console from any directory and just type Claude and then start hacking away. The speed of this is admittedly very compelling, and I can see how command line warriors get addicted to this way of working. All right, so that's about it for things that I liked about the Claude Code CLI. So, now it's time to drop into the pessimist mic mode and talk about the things that I'm not such a massive fan of. All right, so first up, appropriately after me just singing the praises of the terminal way of doing things, I'm going to do the absolute opposite and say I really don't like terminal user interfaces. They are, in my opinion, just an inferior way of working. I mean, they just are. So argue with me in the comments if you think otherwise. Firstly, discovering functionality is kind of frustrating. You just have to read the docs or hope that you stumble across the feature that you want. With user interfaces, you can just like click up menus or pop-ups open or other bits of UI show up to show you what's going on and how to access that given feature if it's not immediately visible. Also, mouse interactively in Claude code is very limited and designed and it's designed understandably for the keyboard. But this can get really frustrating when you are used to more normal UIs. A prime example of this is if you want to expand the details of some tool call that Claude made, you have to press Control O, which expands everything at once rather than just the thing that I wanted to expand. In Cursor or VS Code, you just simply click on the one tool call that you want to expand, which I think is just much more intuitive and useful. Actually, it's not just mouse interaction in general with two E's that is inferior. So for example, if I want to select all the text here that I've just typed, I would do normally do like Command A or Control A or something, right? No, this doesn't work in Claude Code. And if I've selected a whole bunch of text from somewhere, maybe like the error console or something, and I want to paste it in, then it does try and do some work, just kind of like compact that down into like a small representation. but it's not a really great user experience because when you press enter, then it kind of expands and you lose that compaction. It's just, it's just not very nice. Oh, and if you have a screenshot that you want to give to Claude Code, nah, sorry, not going to happen. <laughs> I'm just so used to being able to press, take a screenshot and then paste it straight into Cursor's chat window and then just press enter. No, not in Claude Code. Oh, and this one was really weird. Like if you want to add extra lines to your message, you would normally just press 
uh, shift enter to add some extra lines. Uh, but this was not possible until very recently. Or well, it was possible, you had to jump through a lot of hoops to be able to do it. So the way you change a model in Claude Code is you type forward slash model um, and it lists the models that you can choose from. Fine. Now, the problem is you can only do that if you're not, if the agent's not already working on something. Because if you try and type forward slash model and then space, then it doesn't list the models. And then if you press enter, it sends that to the agent midway, midway it's working on something. It's crazy. Why, why we won't let you select a model when it's working on something? And that same weird sort of like the model's working on something behavior seems to happen when you want to try and queue messages up as well. As far as I understand it, you should just be able to type a message um, that should be received once the agent's finished on working on your current task. But it doesn't seem to work like that. Instead, it just seems to send the message immediately to the agent, which if you're lucky, the agent will acknowledge that it should deal with that after its current task. If you're unlucky, it'll just start working on it immediately before it's finished the previous task. With Cursor, on the other hand, it's much more intuitive. You can kind of queue up messages however you like, and you can press, uh, I think it's Alt and Enter, to um, send something immediately. So this is a big one. So I have a $20 plan of Claude, and I was using Opus 4.5 for all of this when building the app. And I found myself blowing through the daily token limit very quick. So I bought some extra credit at, um, at first just $20, but then I found out I, I, had, I needed more credit, so I bought another $20. So in total, it cost me $60 to build this app. Now, I guess this is going to differ for a lot of people, um, but to me, it seems like this is quite expensive for what I got. Admittedly, though, if I was going to do this all by hand myself, it would definitely cost a lot more than $60 in my development time to knock this out. So if you measure it against that, then it's a win. Having said that though, I do feel like I would have done this far more cheaply in Cursor. I tend to be a lot more judicious about swapping to cheaper models when I use Cursor, when I know that that particular task is going to be smaller. I just found it much harder to drop down to a smaller model with Claude Code because of the reasons that I mentioned before with the slash model command. I mean, to do a proper cost comparison, I probably should build the same app again in Cursor and see how much it cost, but it wouldn't be fair because I've kind of already built the app, so I know what it is I need to build. I kind of need to split myself in two or something <laughs> and then, you know, do a proper test. All right, so I guess it's time we cracked open the ID and look at the code it generated. <laughs> Just kidding. This is vibe coding. Who cares about the code, right? Just as long as it works. In all seriousness, though, because I started from scratch and didn't use one of the uh, built-in convex templates, I built this whole thing um, without using the convex cursor rules file, which usually helped guide the model in the right direction when writing convex code. So I was very impressed with how well things went when writing convex code without that rules file. The agent just got it right away. I was also very happy to see that it was intelligent enough to often use the convex CLI when it needed to, to call a internal mutation or query or access things from the convex server. I think there is space, however, for us as convex to provide some extra tooling, maybe some Claude skills for certain aspects of convex development, such as unit testing migrations, optimistic updates, things like that. Um, it's things that the model can still sometimes struggle with. So do drop me a comment down below if you'd like to see us develop more of that kind of thing. Right now, I think I have a little bit of a better understanding about what purely agentic development is going to feel and progress like in 2026. I think I have spotted some gaps that I need to fill as a developer experience engineer that aren't necessarily code first related, but are still software development related. I'm feeling a little bit less anxiety now about what it means for me as a code expert going forward and more excited about the future. I've now had a glimpse of what it's going to be like to be a software development expert, not just a coding expert. Oh, and by the way, I have seen a bunch of chatter lately about this thing called Ralph Wiggum and have got a lot of thoughts on it. Um, it looks a little bit like BDD or TDD mixed with agentic development. And I've also seen a bunch of chatter about this Kanban style way of coding, which looks super interesting to me as it combines nice looking UIs with agentic coding. 
I'm excited to dive into the potential overlap maybe of both of those. So make sure you get subscribed and stay tuned because that is going to be definitely coming. But as for now, I'm going to leave it here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio.